Hello everyone. We need to continue working on our genetics problems here. We already did question number one, and now we'll dig into question number two. The questions that we're tackling here are called complete dominance, where one allele is completely or totally dominant over the other. So the dominant al allele completely covers or masks the recessive allele. Now, before we get into question no number two, I need to be sure that you link what we talked about earlier to what we're doing now in genetics. So earlier, we talked about DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, the genetic material for all living things. And we said how DNA is the instructions for how to make protein. And so protein is this long chain of amino acids. And the amino acids are put together in a very specific order, just like the letters in a word. And that makes different proteins as you change the order of the amino acids. We then got into more detail. And we said DNA is red to make a molecule called messenger RNA. This occurs in the nucleus of the cell. When you read DNA to make messenger RNA, that process is called transcription. The messenger RNA then leaves the nucleus, goes out into the cytoplasm, where the messenger RNA is read by the ribosome. When the ribosome reads the messenger RNA, brings in amino acids, and that process is called translation. And as the ribosome bonds the amino acids together in a very specific order, it makes a protein. So now that we're in genetics, we need to understand that this protein, when your cells read your DNA and produce your messenger RNA and make your proteins, what this causes is this causes your phenotype. This is what makes you what you are on the outside, what you are physically. And these different phenotypes are called alleles. Whether you have dark hair, light hair, brown eyes, blue eyes, okay? These are all of the different proteins that are caused based on which form of DNA you received from your biological parent. So if your biological parent gave you a section of DNA that codes for messenger RNA, that then codes for a brown protein that is stored in your eyes, we then say that you have brown eyes. That brown protein is your phenotype. And that phenotype is caused by what we call a section of DNA, which is the brown eye allele. So when we're throwing around this big R, little r, and big Q, little q, understand that what those letters stand for is actually a section of DNA that codes for a very specific protein. And you say, well, I don't have brown eyes. My eyes are hazel, or my eyes are blue, or my eyes are green. What does that mean? That means that from your biological parents, you inherited a different section of, of DNA. The A's and T's and G's and C's are in a different order. Therefore, you make a different form of messenger RNA than these people. Well, if you make different RNA, you then make a different protein. Let's say that you make a hazel protein. Well, guess what hazel is? We then say you have hazel eyes. That is your phenotype. And that phenotype is caused by what we would then call the hazel eye allele. So all an allele really is, is a section of DNA that codes for a protein. So ultimately, DNA causes your phenotype. Okay, but you know now in that little arrow is transcription, translation, messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomes, amino acid. There's a lot of chemistry that goes on in that little arrow right there. So when we look at this uh, genetics problem set, we're not looking at eye color though. We're looking at something more serious. We're looking at the fact that did you receive DNA that allows you to be healthy? Or is it possible for someone to receive DNA where they are sick, 
whether you're talking about cystic fibrosis or Tay-Sachs, and this gets really serious. So, now that you have some background, let's take a look at the problem. So what we're addressing in question number two is a condition called sickle cell anemia. And so the first stop, or the first step actually, with any genetics problem is to dissect the problem. What is the problem telling us? So it says sickle cell anemia is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder. Autosomal means it's on one of the chromosomes between 1 to 22. It's recessive. That's important. So sickle cell anemia is recessive. It's a disorder that affects the shape of your red blood cells. Ah, faulty protein. The protein doesn't form properly. A faulty protein causes the red blood cells to deform. They form a sickle or curved shape, okay? And this curved shape prevents them from transporting oxygen properly, which causes a condition called anemia. So therefore, your anemia is caused by your sickled cells, and so you have sickle cell anemia. Fine. So that's step one. So now that we know about uh, the condition, we need to define our allele. So we need to pick a letter. Well, I wouldn't pick S because capital and lowercase s look the same, and I wouldn't pick C either. So I'm going to pick A for anemia. So we have the dominant allele and the recessive allele. Fine. So one of these is going to be the sickle cell trait, and one of them is going to be healthy. Well, which one's which? We have to go back to the problem. So the problem tells us that sickle cell anemia is a recessive disorder. Therefore, our recessive allele is sickle cell anemia. That means that our dominant allele is healthy. That means that you and I both carry at least a capital A. You and I might carry big A, big A. Some of us might carry big A, little a. We would have to have a genetic screen. So there are our alleles. So that's step two. So now step three, we need to make our cross. We need to take a look at our parents, okay? So what do we have here? Well, we go back to the question. And the question says, consider the results if a homozygous dominant typical individual, homozygous dominant. So let's make her homozygous dominant. And then it says that she's typical. So this tells us about her genotype, and this tells us about her phenotype. She's homozygous dominant, and she's typical. All right, if she's homozygous dominant, homo means same, zygous means pair. So she carries the same pair of alleles. So if she carries the same pair and they're dominant, that would be big A, big A. She's big A, big A, and since she's typical, that means that she's healthy. That's good news. Let's take a look at her partner. It says that this homozygous dominant typical individual reproduces with a carrier. He's a heterozygote. Okay, so he's a heterozygote. Hetero, different, zygote pair. So she, he has a different pair. His alleles are different. He's big A, little a, like such. And this is our cross. So that's step three. Now step four, we go down here and we make our Punnett square. Now whether we put her contribution on top or on the side doesn't matter. So I'll take her big A, big A and put it on top. I'll take his big A, little a, and put it on the side. So there's our Punnett square. Fine. So now let's see what they could have for children. So big A, big A is then this square here. This is big A, big A. Then here and here come together here. That would make this square big A, big A. This square down here, this one and this one, they come together, big A, little a, here and here, come together, big A, little a, done. So step one, dissect the problem. That's what we did here. Step two, define your alleles. Step three, define your parents or your cross. Step four, Punnett square. So now step five, let's see what the question asks for. So on part A, it says, what are the possible 
genotypes of their children. What are their children genetically? Okay, so let's take a look inside of the Punnett square. What could they have? They could have a big A, big A, which would be a homozygous dominant individual. This is homozygous dominant. So that takes care of these two. Or they could have an individual who's big A, little a. That is a different pair, so they could have a heterozygote. Cool, so those are the two choices. Then it says B. What is the probability, what is the chance of them having a child with sickle cell anemia? Well, let's go back to our alleles here. First, in order for someone to have sickle cell anemia, they have to receive two copies of the recessive allele. Someone who is sick with sickle cell, say that three times fast, has to be little a, little a. The good news here is none of their children are little a, little a. It's physically impossible. So what is the probability of them having a child with sickle cell? Zero chance. Why? Because only he carries the sickle cell trait. Since she doesn't carry it, that, that, that means that they could give rise to a carrier, and this carrier might need some genetic counseling when they decide to reproduce. But right now, they're going to have 100% healthy children. That's excellent news. All right, now, part C, D, and E, this is where you are going to jump into good old Google, and you're going to find out the details of sickle cell. This has its roots in Africa, in Central and Northern Africa. You'll see. So, how often do you see sickle cell in live births? This data is going to be different in the United States versus Africa. This uh, allele is carried much more often in people of African descent. Then, D, what's the life expectancy? Do these people die as children? Do they live a full life? Let's look this up. And then, I was just talking about this, is there an ethnic, geographic, or cultural significance to sickle cell? Absolutely. So, again, understand that what I'm looking for here is procedure. I want you to understand how to do these problems. I'm not going to go through and grade these and I'm looking for the right answer. That's not what this is all about. This is about procedure. So, step one, read your question, dissect the question. Step two, define your alleles. What's dominant? What is recessive? Step three, Produce your cross. What are your parents? Step four, draw the Punnett square. What are their children going to look like? Or what could their children look like? And then step five, answer the question. Excellent. We'll talk to you soon.